Everybody's talking about it, the shortage of microchips. Whether you make cars like Mary Barra of GM. We saw a significant impact with the semiconductor shortage last year. I would say every quarter it gets a little bit better, but we're not through it yet. Uh, there still is work to do. Or you make heating and air conditioning equipment like Dave Gitlin of Carrier. We actually um, don't have the kind of buying power with the chip OEMs that maybe some of some other folks in other industries do, but I can tell you that we have met directly with the CEOs of major chip manufacturers. We've done unique arrangements with them that we've never done in the past. And it's not just the buyers of chips feeling the pressure. The producers, like Kurt Sievers of NXP Semiconductors, are feeling every bit as much pressure. The entire semiconductor supply chain is under pretty heavy stress these days. Even Fed Chair Jay Powell's job has gotten harder because of the chip shortage which he says is partly what's leading to the inflation we're seeing. People want to buy cars. Car, car makers can't make any more cars because there are no semiconductors. So that's, that's never happened. So what's the solution? Congress is working on a CHIPS Act to get more investment in onshore production, which Congresswoman Haley Stevens of Michigan says is critical for the auto industry in her district. Here in automotive land, one of the things that you cannot escape from our, is the chip shortage. We have got to pass the CHIPS Act. But whatever the solution, just about everyone agrees that it's going to take time. Whether you're in the market to buy. We still think it's gonna linger into the first half of this year, and we should be farther out of it by the end of this year. Or in the market to sell. This is gonna get better through next year, but I don't think everything is gonna be in balance from a supply demand perspective through the end of next year.